Hello and welcome to another NTNA episode everyone. First things first, thank you all for bearing with me for these long three weeks. In return, I promise you, today's video will be worth your while, because we're going to make this from this. If you're new to our channel, here at Antwiena we introduce ant species as we encounter them, show you how to build them nests they can call home, do product reviews and, of course, show you the progress of the colonies under our care. So, if you don't want to miss out, you should consider subscribing to our channel. That being said, today we're going to build a home for a most important colony. Do you recognize this queen? In case you missed it, this lady is no other than Queen Elizabeth, the first of Vienna. This Serviformica cunicularia species queen is the first I encountered and the very reason I started this channel. So she and her daughters are ants of great importance in our household. A quick look and you can see that Her Majesty and her underlings withstood the winter well and she personally declared the end of hibernation period by laying a bunch of eggs already. So they are developing nicely and therefore going to need more space sooner than later. And since we want to provide Queen Elizabeth the royal treatment she deserves, we are going to build an appropriate setup to boost the spirit and growth of her colony. Speaking of a new setup, it needs to provide more space but at the same time be compact enough to withstand the next hibernation period as a whole. Since I am experimenting a lot with plaster lately and it's a great material regarding water absorption, we are going to use it as the main nest component. Furthermore, I have decided to make use of the round outward from a pair of ants that you saw in my last unboxing video. In an attempt to keep everything sturdy and compact, we are going to place the nest directly in the outward, improve the aesthetics with some decorations resulting in an all-in-one formicarium. That being said, let us go through what we're going to need for this. Plaster casting powder, some water, a mixing box, a mold for your nest, some vibrant acrylic paint, that's optional, a pencil to draw the tunnels beforehand if you feel the need for it, a chisel or dremel, a piece of plexi or hobby glass to top your nest, a sponge, for hydration, a brush, some aquarium gravel, a few decorations and of course the outworld meaning the box you want to place everything in. Now to the build. Starting with the nest, begin by mixing the plaster casting powder with the water. The optimal consistency here should be melted ice cream. Next, you can optionally add some acrylic paint to the mixture to give it a nice vibrant color.
then put the mixture in your mold and let it dry out. Here you see me doing that with blue color, but I made a mixture with orange beforehand. After half a day, it should have dried out somewhat. So gently remove your cast from the mold you used to give it shape and let it dry completely for several days. Now, feel free to draw the tunnels any way you like. The sky is the limit when it comes to your imagination. Don't forget a watering area though. I use a Dremel to carve the tunnels out, but a chisel or a flat screwdriver will do the job just as well. Follow up by fixing the glass top to the nest. I do that with a few screws to ensure reusability. But you can also fix it once and for all with aquarium silicone. Just keep in mind that you won't be able to clean it as well. Ok, our main component, the plaster nest, is now ready. Next comes the outward. Make sure to clean the outward well before this, so the plaster can get a better hold. Again, mix some casting powder with water and pour it carefully in the outward. If you happen to spill anything, you can clean it up as long as it's still liquid. Then. Place the previously created nest and your chosen decorations gently inside the liquid plaster. Don't let too much time slip though, because the plaster is going to dry out before we complete what we are about to do. As soon as you finish placing your decorations, pour the aquarium gravel over everything. I use a spoon for more precision. Afterwards, let it dry out as it is. One to two days later, the setup should be dry enough. At this point, you can get rid of the excess gravel with a paintbrush like I'm doing here. And... That's it guys! We finished the build of our all-in-one Formicarium. Now after applying some talcum, PTRFE or paraffin oil for me, you can let your colony explore the new environment. We hope that our colony will move in their brand new luxurious home soon. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, leave me a thumbs up if you liked the video or don't if you didn't. 
and don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we have yet to reveal more colonies and introduce them to their Formicaria soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!